Emily Oster, Crib Sheet, A Data-Driven Guide to Better, More Relaxed Parenting, From Birth to Preschool. Are you baffled by the conflicting opinions on parenting that surround you as a new parent? Fear not. Crib Sheet, A Data-Driven Guide to Better, More Relaxed Parenting, From Birth to Preschool, by Emily Oster seeks to cut through the confusion. This book summary provides a fresh perspective on parenting decisions by viewing them through the lens of economics, empowering you to make informed choices that reflect both scientific research and your personal preferences. Embrace the art of modern decision-making, tackle hot topics such as circumcision, co-sleeping, and breastfeeding, and gradually learn to develop a useful framework for tackling parenthood with confidence. Decoding Parenting Dilemmas The world of parenting advice can seem like a maze, with conflicting opinions and moral judgments making it overwhelming for new parents. To navigate this, it's essential to recognize that there isn't always a right answer. Taking the perspective of an economist, you'll find that the key is to understand each choice's pros, cons, and consequences, make informed decisions based on your unique situation, and adjust your expectations accordingly. Parenting can often feel like navigating uncharted waters. From the moment your child is born, you're bombarded with decisions to make. Should you circumcise a male newborn? Should the mother room with her baby at the hospital, or should the baby sleep in the nursery? Seeking advice can lead to more confusion as friends, family, doctors, and online forums provide contradicting answers vehemently backed by evidence ranging from scientific research to personal anecdotes. Not only that, but people often deliver their opinions with a hefty dose of moral judgment. For example, some may argue that not breastfeeding your baby equates to being a bad mother. This confusion and pressure would be difficult enough to handle on any day, but it's intensified when faced with the sleep deprivation and stress that accompany new parenthood. The desire to make the best decisions for your fragile little one makes the stakes seem incredibly high. To overcome this dilemma, shift your mindset and approach parenting questions like an economist. You'll quickly realize that there are seldom definitive, right answers. Instead of obsessing over finding the perfect solution, focus on assessing each choice's potential benefits, drawbacks, and consequences. Evaluate each option in the context of your unique situation and values. Remember, what works for one family might not suit another, and that's perfectly okay. By adopting this perspective, you can make informed decisions and adapt your expectations to suit your circumstances. Parenthood doesn't come with a one-size-fits-all manual, an understanding that will allow you to face challenges with greater confidence and clarity. Economics meets parenting choices. Parenting and economics shared the common ground of decision-making. When faced with a choice, such as hiring a nanny or taking a child to daycare, there are monetary and non-monetary factors to consider. Ultimately, the right decision varies for each individual based on their preferences and circumstances. Much like the seemingly unconnected world of economics, parenting also revolves around making difficult decisions. In modern economics, deliberation occurs when choosing between two options. For instance, an individual must consider the costs and benefits involved, known as inputs in economic terms. Take the decision of hiring a nanny versus placing a child in daycare. The nanny option might cost more financially, making daycare a more attractive choice in terms of affordability. However, the significance of this price difference relies on individual factors, such as income range and personal preferences. Non-monetary inputs are also crucial in decision-making. Let's consider a middle-class individual who prefers a nanny's personalized care over daycare. Giving up this preference becomes a non-monetary cost for that person. Conversely, if the social opportunities offered by daycare are important to the parent, foregoing that becomes the cost of hiring a nanny. Even when the monetary and non-monetary inputs are identical for everyone, choices still hinge on personal factors. People will make different decisions based on their unique circumstances and how they prioritize these inputs. In conclusion, our economic lens provides valuable insight, 
there is no universal right decision for all when it comes to parenting. Each person's choice is uniquely tailored to their preferences and circumstances, demonstrating that a one-size-fits-all solution is far from the reality of decision-making. Navigating Parental Decisions In the complex world of parenting, making the right decisions can be a daunting task. Instead of searching for a one-size-fits-all solution, embrace a general framework that considers the costs and benefits of each choice, factoring in your own preferences and circumstances. To help navigate this process, recognize the factors influencing your decision, like your child's well-being, your personal happiness, or your family's financial situation. By evaluating these aspects and understanding their importance, you can achieve a well-rounded and informed decision. Parenting is filled with pivotal moments that require you to make critical decisions. Given the varying preferences and circumstances of each family, there is no magic formula to determine the best course of action. However, there is a general framework you can follow to better understand these choices and effectively weigh their costs and benefits. First, identify the factors that influence the decision you're about to make. For instance, if you're considering whether to return to work after having a baby, you might be thinking about the impact of your choice on your child's development, your own happiness, or your family's finances. To assess your child's well-being, consider empirical evidence and scientific research on the matter. In the case of staying at home or going back to work, this could involve examining studies on child development concerning full-time and working parents. On the other hand, your personal happiness and success depend on your unique experiences and preferences. Weigh the positive and negative aspects of staying at home or resuming your career to gauge the impact on your overall fulfillment. Your outlook on parenting and the time spent with your child may further influence this decision. Lastly, consider the financial implications. Evaluate the potential income earned from returning to work against the costs and benefits of staying home with your child. This analysis will help you understand the economic impact of either choice. Taking into account these critical components, you can better balance your preferences and circumstances. This method will serve as your compass, guiding you towards well-rounded and informed decisions throughout your parenting journey. Balancing Finances and Parenting Making tough parenting decisions often involves weighing financial implications, such as whether to return to work or stay at home with your baby. Factors such as opportunity cost, marginal value, and personal priorities play crucial roles in these choices. It all boils down to understanding the balance between financial gains or losses, individual preferences, and the value placed on time spent with your child. As a parent, financial planning is central to navigating the countless critical decisions that must be made. Take, for example, the choice between returning to work after having a baby or staying home to focus on parenting. On the surface, a quick calculation of income and expenses can appear to offer a clear answer. However, individual circumstances and preferences add multiple layers to this seemingly straightforward question. The actual decision is rooted in a complex web of factors that include opportunity cost and marginal value. Imagine you live in a country without free childcare and lack relatives nearby to help with your baby. This situation necessitates hiring professional childcare workers, which can significantly impact your income compared to staying home. In some cases, the cost of childcare might outweigh your income, leading to financial loss. On the other hand, your income may cover childcare costs, but the surplus might only be marginal. For instance, if your salary brings in $25,000 annually, but childcare costs amount to $18,000, the profit is only $7,000. The importance of that $7,000 depends on your personal situation and values. If you desperately need the money or crave the independence of returning to work, then it could make sense to resume working. However, if you prioritize time with your child, the opportunity cost of missed bonding might not justify the extra income. Ultimately, the decision rests on your unique set of priorities, such as the potential benefits of extra income weighed against the desire to spend time with your child. The same principle extends to non-monetary factors as well, emphasizing the critical balance of individual values, finances, and parenting obligations. 
The co-sleeping conundrum. Making parenting choices can be a complicated yet crucial process, as balancing risks and benefits of each decision involves rationality and emotional factors. Take co-sleeping, for instance, while it carries some risks to the baby, such as SIDS or suffocation, it can also provide benefits for parents, like improved sleep and convenience, especially for breastfeeding mothers. Ultimately, deciding whether co-sleeping is a risk worth taking depends on parents' preferences and priorities. Many parenting decisions call for a rational balancing act between potential risks and advantages. We ideally should mentally list the pros and cons and reach a practical conclusion. However, emotions can cloud our judgment, especially when our children's safety is at stake. One such example is the choice to co-sleep or share your bed with your baby. Doing so exposes your infant to various risks, like being accidentally smothered or becoming caught in the sheets. Scientific evidence also suggests a higher risk of sudden infant death syndrome, SIDS, the unexplained death of a seemingly healthy baby. Upon learning of these risks, you might immediately decide against co-sleeping. Yet, interestingly, driving with your baby in a car carries an even greater risk for infant death compared to co-sleeping, 0.20 versus 0.14 per 1,000 births. Nevertheless, risks are inevitable in life, and the existence of risk doesn't imply absolute avoidance. The real question is whether the risk is worth taking, which rests on your personal preferences and calculated evaluation of potential benefits and costs. So, what are the benefits of co-sleeping? Primarily, they serve the parent rather than the baby. For breastfeeding mothers, co-sleeping offers convenience, as they won't need to get out of bed for nighttime feedings. Consequently, parents may enjoy better sleep. Many parents suffer from sleep deprivation, which can lead to depression. Therefore, the benefits of co-sleeping are considerable. However, whether these benefits outweigh the risks depends on each individual's values and concerns. In the end, the decision to co-sleep hinges on your priority for your convenience, sleep, and well-being against your baby's safety. As a parent, understanding the risks and benefits enables you to make the best choices for yourself and your child. Debunking Parenting Myths Parental decision-making often involves weighing subjective factors and empirical data. While it might seem that factual information should be more reliable, the truth is that interpreting scientific research can be challenging. A common flaw in parenting studies is assuming that correlation equals causation. For example, numerous studies have correlated breastfeeding with higher IQs in children. However, this association may be due to other factors, such as mother's education and income levels which also correlate with higher IQs. Adjusting the data for these variables often reduces the correlation between breastfeeding and IQ. In reality, the link between these two factors may be minimal or even non-existent, demonstrating the complexity of determining causality in parenting research. The Science Behind Parenting Choices To make well-informed parenting decisions, consider the quality of scientific research available for various options. The gold standard is large-scale randomized controlled trials, RCTs, which effectively deal with confounding variables. RCTs can confidently establish causality if they show a correlation between variables along with a causal mechanism linking them. Unfortunately, there aren't many large-scale RCTs in this area, so carefully weigh the evidence when making decisions. When it comes to making evidence-based parenting decisions, it's essential to recognize that not all research is equal. Economic reasoning plays a crucial role here, not only should you consider the choices themselves but also the quality of evidence that guides your decision-making process. All research is affected by confounding variables and the possibility of researchers overlooking certain factors. However, some types of research have a better handle on these issues. Large-scale randomized controlled trials, RCTs, are considered the gold standard of scientific investigations. They offer greater validity because they eliminate most of the confounding variables while testing for a specific factor alone. To understand how RCTs work, let's take a look at an example involving the effects of breastfeeding. In this scenario, 
you would recruit a large number of mothers and randomly divide them into two groups, one treatment group that breastfeeds and one control group that doesn't. By randomizing the groups, you ensure that the mother's characteristics are roughly the same on average, except for the breastfeeding variable. When a correlation is found between breastfeeding and a certain outcome, like a decreased risk of gastrointestinal disorders, you can be confident that a causal link exists between the two. The larger the sample size, the more accurate this correlation will be. Additionally, if a causal mechanism can explain the connection between the two variables, that strengthens the confidence in the relationship's causality. An example of this would be the lowered risk of breast cancer in breastfeeding mothers, which can be attributed to reduced estrogen production, a known breast cancer risk factor. Unfortunately, there has only been one large-scale RCT conducted on the effects of breastfeeding. This study revealed only two significant health outcome links, a 4% reduction in diarrhea and a 3% decrease in skin rashes, like eczema. Other supposed benefits, such as an increased IQ in children, lack significant correlation. As a parent striving to make informed decisions, understanding the quality of evidence is essential. Large-scale RCTs are ideal, but not always available when considering various parenting choices. So, take the available evidence into account and make well-informed, thoughtful decisions that best suit your child's needs. Unraveling Breastfeeding Benefits There are numerous types of research when it comes to studying the impact of breastfeeding on children's health. Observational studies, which compare groups of breastfed and non-breastfed children, allow researchers to draw conclusions with varying degrees of confidence. Confidence levels depend on factors such as sample size and controlling for confounding variables. Although breastfeeding is believed to offer numerous benefits, current research only confidently supports the reduction of ear infection risks in breastfed children. When we think of scientific research, the golden standard is randomized controlled trials. But what about other types of research? Observational studies hold their own value and deserve a closer look. Imagine a study comparing breastfeeding and non-breastfeeding mothers and their children, observing differences in health outcomes. The larger the group and the more controlled for confounding variables, the more you can trust the results. However, with smaller samples and less control, skepticism is warranted. Sibling comparisons are particularly interesting in observational studies. Comparing breastfed and non-breastfed siblings removes many confounding factors due to similar familial and socioeconomic backgrounds. Another strong approach is collecting extensive data about children's backgrounds to control for possible confounders, although some questions about overlooked variables may remain. When multiple large-scale and well-controlled observational studies reach similar conclusions, we can have more faith in their results. In the context of breastfeeding benefits, current research identifies a reduced risk of ear infections as the most significant finding. Claims that breastfeeding reduces the risk of issues like diabetes, juvenile arthritis, meningitis, obesity, pneumonia, and cancer are often mentioned in everyday conversations, but reliable data from randomized controlled trials and observational studies do not strongly support these assertions. It is essential to recognize that the lack of evidence for these additional benefits doesn't disprove their existence, it merely indicates that there isn't a compelling reason to be confident in them just yet. Research around breastfeeding continues to evolve as we gain a deeper understanding of its impact on children's health, making it crucial to keep an open mind while interpreting different studies. The Flaws of Case Control Studies Case control studies attempt to identify causal connections by investigating common factors among subjects with similar symptoms or outcomes. Though some well-conducted studies might be valuable, this method is significantly affected by confounding variables, small sample sizes, and the potential for researcher biases or unreliable memories. The Wakefield study linking vaccines to autism offers a prime example of the pitfalls of this research approach. Therefore, Randomized control trials and observational studies should be prioritized and case control findings must be viewed with a healthy level of skepticism. In the world of scientific research on potential parenting risks and benefits, case control studies often take center stage. 
The main idea behind these studies is to identify common factors among children displaying similar symptoms or outcomes. Researchers look for causal connections while adjusting for confounding variables. However, this method has several pitfalls that call for caution when interpreting results. One notorious example demonstrating the fallibility of case control studies is the 1998 Wakefield study. Andrew Wakefield, a then doctor, investigated the potential link between the measles, mumps, and rubella vaccine and autism symptoms in 12 children. His findings contributed to the growth of the anti-vaccine movement, as he alleged a causal connection between the vaccine and autism. However, it was later discovered that Wakefield's study suffered from significant flaws, including a tiny sample size, selective inclusion of subjects, and falsified data. The problems with case control studies are not limited to Wakefield's example. These studies are often influenced by confounding variables and underlying differences among participants. While larger sample sizes can help mitigate these issues, smaller sample sizes, like Wakefield's 12-child cohort, exacerbate them. Moreover, the potential for intentional or unintentional researcher biases can further undermine the reliability of case control studies. Another challenge for case control studies is the reliance on retrospective information, as parents are often asked to recall past actions and decisions. This can lead to inaccuracies in the data due to faulty memories or the influence of later events on recollections. For example, researchers studying early reading success might inquire about when parents started reading to their child and how frequently they did so. However, memories from years prior may be hazy or influenced by subsequent events in the child's life. In light of these challenges, it's essential to prioritize well-conducted randomized control trials and observational studies over case control studies. While case control studies might provide valuable insights in some instances, the potential for confounding variables, small sample sizes, researcher biases, and unreliable memories call for skepticism when interpreting their findings. Understanding the complexities of parenting can be greatly aided by applying the principles of economics and utilizing decision-making, based on well-conducted large-scale randomized control trials and observational studies. By assessing the multitude of studies and evidence, CribSheet provides a clear and comprehensive guide to navigating the challenges and choices inherent in parenting. As you embrace this insightful approach, remember that different decisions can be right for different people, ultimately. The most important factor is considering both your personal preferences and circumstances when making data-driven choices. As a result, your parenting journey will be better informed, more relaxed, and confidently tailored to your unique family dynamic.